Okay, so in this first question on the final exam review material, and we're looking at a question on scaling, looking at a situation where we have this owner of a beagle, notices that the relative surface area, and as I've sort of put in parentheses here, that it's important to note that the relative surface area is not the surface area, but it's the surface area per unit volume. And so A over V. And this owner just notices that this is decreased by a factor of four over a period of 18 months. So that means it's one quarter uh, of the original uh, relative surface area. So this tells us, and it's something that you should know, is that the relative surface area is a decreasing um, function with size or volume. In the sense, so it, as the ob as the object gets bigger, its relative surface area decreases because there's less area per unit volume as the object gets bigger, because area scales more slowly than volume. And then when we assume the dog grows isometrically, which is what we assume for all scaling problems, in that uh, it's just easier to handle the math. In that case, although this is not technically true, but this is what we'll assume, that the, the dog grows uh, isometrically means that it grows by the same amount in each dimension, x, y, and z. So if it doubles its length, it doubles its width, it doubles its height. That's what the isometric to, uh, means. And we're looking for the change in the dog's surface area. Um, and yeah, increase by it. So in this particular case, we definitely know that the surface area is going to increase as the dog gets bigger, even though the relative surface area is decreasing. So technically what we want to do is figure out how does the surface area of an object scale with the relative surface area because we know the change in the relative surface area, so we would like to know the change, how does the surface area scale with the relative surface area. So all of these quantities are scaling with the linear, with the linear dimension to a sort of fixed power. So there's going to be a scaling relationship between area and relative surface area. There's some fixed power P here. So really what I, what I want to determine here is the value of P. What is that power? Because I know it, if I know that, well, the area will change by whatever factor A over V changes by to this fixed power. And we know that the new A over V is only one quarter of the old. So the correct answer will be one quarter raised to the power of P. But our goal is to find what is this power, how, what is this scaling relationship. So if we do a little bit of, um, sort of going back to first principles, just for an additional uh, teaching, this is not necess technically necessary for uh, the problem, but just uh, for some extra details. We know that the area scales with L squared for something that goes isometrically, where L will represent the characteristic length. And that could be the radius for a sphere or a circle, or L could be the length of the side of a cube. But this is represent the characteristic length. And we know that the volume scale to L cubed. And that's the same again, something that's grown isometrically. So since both A and V scale as a function of L, A and V will change proportionally to each other to a different fixed power. So the area scales with volume to the two-thirds power. Here we can see that area will scale more slowly with volume, and that the volume, you can sort of make the volume the subject of this equation, or proportionality, saying that volume scales with area to the three-halves power. But what I want to do here is focus in on this equation. A is proportional to V to the two thirds. So in this particular case, I'm going to come up with a term of this A over V term. And the first place that we derive this A over V quantity. So I can state that A over V. So if I divide this equation, and I just sort of put an asterisk beside, but divide both sides by V. I would have V to the two thirds over V. And if you use the um, exponent rules, like a to the n over a to the m is equal to a n minus m. And if you want to subtract the two um, exponents, so here I can state that a over v scales uh, is proportional to v to the negative one third. So this is would be a good place to start. I think the exam question, if you were a student. Yeah, because this is a this is a concept that has come up in the lecture, um, and this is sort of a known, more than a uh, discussed idea. So you can sort of skip these intermediate steps and go straight to here. So at least we have the right we have a over b and we have b to the negative one third. 
and but technically what I want to do is have here is A over B in terms of A. Now we do have these equations over on the left so I guess we will need them at some point. So here I have A over B in terms so the relative surface area in terms of B. But ideally what I want is A over B in terms of A or vice versa. So here I'm going to use this this equation here knowing that V is, a, is proportional to A to the three halves we could then state that A over V is proportional to A to the three halves all raised to the negative one third. And here are uh, these trees will cancel. So A over V is proportional to A to the negative one half. Now we're almost uh, finished here. So we now have worked down to get an A over V in terms of A. But really what I want from the very beginning is A in terms of A over V. So if I, what I do to, do to get A to be the subject of the equation raised to the power of 1, I want to raise this whole quantity to the power of negative 2. That's A to the negative 1 half raised to the negative 2 leaves us with A to the 1. So I should do that to both sides. So I can state that A over V to the negative 2 is proportional to A. And that's technically what our... Uh, or we can write this as A is proportional to A over B to the negative 2. So that's really our big equation here. And all the work that we've done so far gets us to this. So now if I know how the A over B changes, which is called the relative surface area, if I know how this changes, the area changes by that factor to raised to the negative 2. So this new area area new is going to be um, one quarter raised to the negative two of area old. Um, so that's why you, you, you take the factor by which A over B changes by, so it's decreasing by a factor of four, so that's equivalent to one over four. Raised to the, so we figure out that A scales with area over volume to the negative two. So if I know the factor by which the A over B changes, that's how this area will, will change. So and you work this out in your calculator, you find that this is equal to um, 16 times the old area. So this leaves us with choice B being the correct answer.